Fantastic in, uh, alignment here between the management team and us as shareholders, so that's great, we can give that a tick. Hey everyone, so just like the title of this video suggests, today we're looking at Salesforce. And I'm gonna do my normal quick valuation of this by going through my nine point checklist, give you my opinion at the end, and I'll also give you what, well, if you do really like this company, I'll give you a buy price that I think is probably giving you a margin of safety. I'll try to work out its fair value as well by the end of this video, so you'll know that. But this isn't a deep dive into the company whatsoever. And if you are interested in taking this further, if you really like this company, well, I strongly suggest going through Hamish Hodder's course. And he is giving us a 30% off discount code for my friends and family. So that's, I'm gonna pass that on to you guys as well if you are interested. Here it is here on the screen. And look, I think Hamish is a fantastic guy and the course that he's put together must have taken so long to do because it is so detailed and it goes through everything that you'd possibly need to know about understanding a company and what questions you have to ask yourself. And look, it's a fantastic course and I strongly recommend. So now let me give you just my high level understanding of what Salesforce even is. So it's one of the largest software companies in the world. It pioneered cloud software and it's market cap at the moment, $250 billion. So this is a massive mega cap company now. It just acquired Slack in 2020. I think that's really interesting. Maybe you're familiar with Slack. I'm familiar with Slack. A lot of people that I know use it. I'm in Ukraine. I think everyone uses Slack here because they're remote workers and Fantastic piece of software. Now Salesforce is led by the owner operator, Mark Benioff. I don't know how to say that name exactly, but he essentially invented software as a service. So that's the subscription, the cloud-based software where you pay per month to use it. And he, he essentially invented that. So yeah, very smart guy. And he's still part of the, he's still the CEO of the company. I think Salesforce have really strong switching costs. Once you've gone onto Salesforce system and you've got your company embedded in their software, it's gonna be very difficult to change and get away from that. So I think that's a really big barrier to entry for other players in the space, but there are some big players in that space. We're talking Facebook, Google, Microsoft. They would all love a piece of what Salesforce have been able to do. So now let's go through my nine point checklist to see whether this company is worth investigating further. Firstly, I'm gonna look at the revenue growth. So we obviously wanna see this business growing. And for the last 10 years, it's gone from 2 billion to it's like about 23 billion now, so that's fantastic growth. It's actually been really consistent year on year. It didn't even dramatically jump up like I thought it might have in 2020, 2021. Oh, it jumped a little bit more than normal, but uh, it's it's been it's been growing for 10 years straight now, so it's a big tick. Next up is gross margins. Now, the bigger gross margins are, it means that things can go wrong in the company and they have a fair bit of uh, leeway to still turn a profit. So gross margins, anything over 40% is pretty strong because this is gonna be a software business, essentially it's in the 70% range here. So that's great and we can give that a tick. Next up is return on invested capital. And this essentially is, how is the management team using the cash that they're generating to reinvest back into the business and grow that further? So what I'm looking for here is double digit percentages and it being consistent over a long period of time. And return on invested capital, it actually has never been in the double digits. So for the past five years, it's been positive, but it's only single digits, which essentially means what it's reinvesting back into capital into the business isn't really producing huge amounts of money for them. So we're gonna to have to give that across. Next up is debt and debt is the number one reason that businesses get into trouble. So what I'm going to look for here is that their current assets are bigger, significantly bigger than their current liabilities. So they have short-term assets of about 16 billion and actually short-term liabilities of 17 billion. So although they have a lot of long-term assets here in the business, as you can see, the short-term assets are a bit of an issue, which means they're gonna to have to do something, maybe raise a little bit of debt or issue some more shares or something like that to make sure that they can cover their short-term liabilities. Maybe they're gonna to have to sell some of these long-term assets. I'm not sure. This is all a problem, so I'm gonna give it a cross. Next up is free cash flow, and that's essentially what we're gonna get as owners of the business. Free cash flow should be growing with revenue since revenue was so strong. And if we take a look, it has, yes, it has been. So. It has been consistently growing over the last 10 years. It's gone up about 10X in 10 years, which is similar to the growth in the revenue. So that's great, we can give that a tick. Now, if you're new to investing, you're gonna need a brokerage account to buy, sell, and hold your investments. So I use Interactive Brokers and Saxo Bank. Now, the reason I use these is because I think they are the best in the world, because they give you access to international markets. And for me, that's very important because I invest in lots of different countries. They have a long history of performance and they have low fees. 
Interactive Brokers is my actually preferred brokerage account because their fees are the lowest. And if you wanna have a look at how it, how it works and you can get a demo account through the link in the description and you can play around with it, see whether it feels like it's a good fit for you. That's what I'd highly recommend. All right, now back to Salesforce. The next thing we wanna look at is the shares outstanding number. So if this number is getting bigger, it means we're getting diluted as shareholders and that's a bad thing. If this number is getting smaller, it means that, well, that's good for us because our ownership in the business is essentially getting bigger. So to check for that, I look at the shares outstanding for the past decade. It was 550 million about 10 years ago, and now it's almost a billion. So they have consistently been diluting shareholders every year now. So whether this is just compensation to their employees, it doesn't really matter. It means if you're invested in this company, you're getting diluted every year consistently. And that's a big cross. I hate seeing that in companies. Next up is insider ownership. And the reason I look at this is because I want the management team aligned with the shareholders. So if their salary was more important than the stock price, well, it means that they don't really care what happens to the stock price. They can just get their salary each year and their incentives aren't really in line with me as a shareholder. So I wanna see their salary about one tenth of the amount invested in the company in shares. So to do that, I look here, I got Mark Benioff, who's the co-founder. He gets compensated 25 million a year, but he has $8 billion in ownership. That's fantastic. Brett Taylor, who's the president and the COO, he's getting about 14 million a year, but he has $320 million worth of stock. So look, fantastic alignment here between the management team and us as shareholders. So that's great, we can give that a tick. Next up, we go check whether there's any super investors invested in the company. And the reason we do this is because there are some investors out there who have been doing this for decades and decades, gone through many different cycles, and they have been they have a lot more assets under management and a lot better at this than us. So if it's past their filters, it's probably gonna give me a lot more conviction. So the reason I like to do this is because I just don't think I'm that good at this yet, and it reduces me being an idiot. So let's go check who's invested in this company. And we have uh, Chuck Aker, at Acre Capital Management, who I highly respect. Uh, we've got Tom Gaynor as well. Now there's one investor who's not on this list and his name is Rob Finnell at RV Capital Management. And this is the reason why I'm making this video in the first place. So uh, Rob Finnell, I highly respect and it's a big reason why I'm even looking at this in the first place. All right, now last but certainly not least is the price. Now obviously we don't wanna overpay for anything. so. What I do is I look at my intrinsic value calculator to see whether this is in the ballpark of a good price or not. Now I've gone ahead and entered a lot of the information already like free cash flow and the shares outstanding and things like that. Now I'm gonna to try to go for a discount rate of 30%. Now that's really high because I'm actually aiming to try to get around about 20% return on my investment. So I aim for 30% sort of like, well, shoot for the stars and maybe I'll land on the moon. So it's sort of, it's my big margin of safety. That's how I'm treating this 30%. I've gone ahead and found the growth rates already. Now, some of these growth rates, 25% for the next five years is pretty aggressive, but it has been doing that. So it's possible that it can continue at that speed. So we'll give it 25% and then slow it down a little bit after that. It tells me on this calculator that I wanna buy this around about $70. And if I go have a look at the price, we're talking $280, now it's insane. And that means I think it's not even close to a buy price for me. But if we wanted to work out what its fair price would be, what I do is I put in 10% here into the discount rate and it tells me what I think a fair price would be. Assuming that it's still gonna grow at 25% for the next five years then slow down a little to 15% and we only wanna get 10% return on our money. Well, it says if I buy this at under $300, which is right where the price is today, well, it means that you'd hopefully get about 10% if these growth rates are gonna play out. Remember, I haven't factored in share dilution here, so I think this is a bit risky even at this price. So look, let's call this fair value and I would want a significant haircut to fair value so I can get a good return. Maybe we're talking $150, but like I showed you earlier, $70 is probably where I'm talking and that's not gonna happen, I wouldn't think. So my opinion on all of this is that Salesforce is growing really strongly. I think that's fantastic. They have a strong moat for the moment there's a high switching cost for, for businesses to change their software, so I understand that. There's a brilliant owner operator in Mark Benioff who's been around since the start, and he's a very smart guy, so I'm assuming that they can continue to grow with him at the helm. Rob Vernal, Chuck Aker, I respect them both very highly and they've invested in the company. 
There are strong competitors in this space though, with Facebook, Google, and Microsoft. I hate that that shares outstanding number is getting bigger, which means we'd be getting diluted. I hate that. And the price for me, look, it doesn't fit in considering the unknown future of this space. Look, 25% I thought was even pretty aggressive growth rates. Uh, we're not getting any margin of safety here. I'm not gonna get the return that I'm looking for. Look, I might be wrong here, but this doesn't fit, it doesn't fit a lot of my criteria. So I'm happy to just move on from this one. Now, I hope you did get some value out of this video. And if you did, you can hit that like button for me. That would be really nice. Don't forget about Hamish Hotto's course and I'll see you in the next video.